Hi, everyone. I'd um, like to welcome you to our talk, uh, Need a Hug, I'm Secure. Um, in the spirit of David Letterman, I'd like to start off by telling you the other talks you could be watching instead of ours. Um, attacking phone piracy, uh, privacy sounds good, but uh, I don't think it's as good as ours. Hacking Oracle Database Vault, uh, again, you know, there's lots of Oracle talks. How many talks have hug in the title, though? Um, and XFed Confessions, honestly, I, I'd probably be there if I wasn't speaking, but um, that, that's really your choice. Um, well, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Charles Henderson. I'm the Director of Application Security Services at Trustwave. Um, I'm, my team is responsible for application penetration testing, code review, and secure developer training. Uh, standing next to me is Steve Osepic. He's the Director of Security Research, also at Trustwave. Uh, if you don't know what security research is, you probably are in the wrong conference. So, who are you? Well, um, our talk is really aimed at uh, security consultants, penetration testers, organizational security professionals, auditors with a chip on their shoulders, uh, Stack Overflow enthusiasts, as well as furries. So just as, uh, as Charles said, it's a, it's a meta talk. So just prepare yourself. We're going to get into some warm and fuzzy stuff. You need to move that up. Yeah. Um, OK, sorry for my lack of uh, microphone foo. Um, is that better? Is that better? You good? OK. So uh, if you have problems with things like rainbows, rainbows unicorns, LO cats, um, you might want to consider like, you know, having a, having a, a, a plan freak out or kind of getting the heck out of here. Um, the, uh, so I read, you know, I, this is my first meta talk. I, I, I usually do tech talks. It's kind of my, my, safe, my safe zone where I'll write a tool and I'll come up and do a talk about the tool. There's lots of material there, obviously. It's really easy when you write a tool to talk about, you know, all the things you had to go through to, to, to present it, to make it. Um, but uh, I'm going to try to avoid making strange gyrations with my uh, neck here. See if I can get this at the right spot. So uh, I'm not putting your mic on for you. I'm just going to hold it. <laughs> so uh, it's going to make it worse. Put it so, right there. Okay. Okay. So so here's the thing, right? So I read a book about this stuff. I read a, f a handful of books, as, and 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 really, if if you're going to categorize this talk, it kind of falls into like the self-help category more than anything. So I, I read about that, and they said the very first thing you have to do when you when you do a talk like this, you have to have an icebreaker. So if you just give me a minute, I'm going to have an icebreaker here. They say I should give it about 15 seconds, so we're just going to time it. I don't think it's working. I don't know. Did they, did they tell you what we're supposed to look for chuckles. at this point? I'm getting a few chuckles, yeah. I mean, I, I, I told you we should have handed out beer. But um, really, it's really two things here. We're going to talk a lot about the industry. We're going to talk a lot about a lot of missed, what we feel like are missed opportunities, a lot of ways we can connect with our clients, a lot of ways that we can actually make our jobs a lot better, a lot of ways that we can get kind of, you know, better results from our customers, get better results from the industry, uh, things that we've seen over the course of our careers. And then at the end, we're actually going to have a, a prize. So if you can survive, if you can survive all of this touchy-feely stuff to the end of the talk, you're going to get a, a super surprise prize in form of uh, um, something, something, you might, something you might want, something interesting we're going to be releasing later today. Essentially, we're talking 74 minutes of hell for one minute, minute of mediocrity. So <clears throat> I want to start off by uh, giving sort of a, uh, uh, well, really, it's a shout out to my boss, really. But uh, uh, we, uh, we published the Glo Global Security Report uh, back at uh, DEF CON DC this year. And that, that was a real sort of wake up call for I think a lot of us because the results were a little bit uh, out of whack with our expectations. And it actually kind of gave us the idea for this talk. Um, basically, uh, if you haven't read it, you can download it for free. Uh, I mean, you can't beat free. And uh, it uh, contains basically a, a summation of uh, the collective work of our penetration tests, our code reviews, our forensics uh, and incident response projects, our network penetration tests, our application penetration tests, all broken out and uh, uh, ranked one to ten. So, it, uh, according to frequency, so it was. It's actually a really good collection of data. It's available from our website. 
and um, you'll see a lot of references to it in here, and I just wanted to kind of explain what it was. So we gave um, 1,500 kindergartners copies of uh, MS Paint, and we asked them to draw the security mascot, and overwhelmingly, they actually drew this exact picture, which was kind of creepy because it was exactly the same. Um, I think even possibly more creepy, uh, second place was actually a unicorn. And when we asked second place uh, uh, authors why they drew a unicorn, they said because a unicorn's imaginary too. <laughs> but the thing is, I mean, right, we're, we're kind of like getting to be the grumpy old man here. And uh, a lot of these talks, you, you come and, and, and we're getting kind of teed off about this stuff, right? Uh, we're, getting, we're getting really uh, irritated because we have a lot of good ideas. Um, there are a lot of really smart people in this room, a lot of smart people at this conference, and we know what needs to happen to a certain degree, but uh, it's, 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 it's frustrating when people won't listen to us, right? It's frustrating when people kind of turn a blind eye, or it's really hard to get the budget to do what you need to do. Um, some, of the, some of the things that, that you know, they, where they've kind of beat us up, uh, the end of last year, there was the end of the decade um, kind of retrospective on information security. And there's a lot of buzzkill stuff out there, right? I mean, we had, uh, these are just a basic example here, but Securology is talking about how, uh, you know, they're, they're introducing doubt into the idea of penetration testing. What if the penetration test tester isn't worth his salt? What if, you know, the, the, um, the standard isn't up to, up to snuff? You know, the, there are a lot of ideas about, um, is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to do uh, security in your organization? This one freaked me out. The Information Security Magazine, um, large majority of CEOs are resigned, resigned to the possibility organizations, organizations <coughs> suffering a data breach of some type in the coming year. A um, long time ago, uh, the, the, uh, the head of uh, Union Pacific was kind of quoted on the record, off the record, as saying, uh, in, in a manner of speaking, he said, basically, it's cheaper to clean up the wrecks. Okay? It's kind of where we're at, right? If you look at these organizations and you look at where they spend their money, they spend their money on the lawyers. They spend their money on the inf incident response. If you were to go into a lot of these large organizations and say, uh, what's, your, uh, what's your plan for data breach? What, how are you going to prevent data breach? A lot of them would say, well, um, you know, we got some firewalls. You have this guy that comes in every once in a while. He's kind of spooky looking, but he, he tells us we're all right. And, uh, you know, we've got, we've got some of these papers over here. And then you say, well, what happens? What, let's say you get hit with a major breach. Not me. You know, every time I hear that, I think I, I carry these things around in my pants. It just kind of freaks me out. So put those over there. Um, so, you know, the, the problem is that these guys, they, they, uh, they have it down to a science how to respond to PR blunders, right? They've got that down to a science. If you, if you were to introduce the idea that you're going to get breached, like let's say right now we, we lost our cardholder data, um, it's a CNN news story, it's on the headline news, whatever, what are we going to do? And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, they're going to have that down. They're going to have that all figured out. So it's the, re it's the resignation, right? It's, it's the idea that these guys are pretty much have told themselves, we're done, we're gonna get owned, it's gonna happen, let's focus on cleaning up the mess. And then, you know, you got Marcus Raynham, you know, I'm not saying anything against him, he's just, he doesn't like those penetration testers a whole lot, right? Um, he's saying it's almost, this is a direct quote, it's almost always a waste of time, he got interviewed by government, GovInfo security. Um, penetration test doesn't tell you you're secure, uh, penetration test either tells you your network sucks, or your penetration testers couldn't get into it. I think they edited that. I have a feeling he said, either your network sucks, your penetration tester sucks, right? That's kind of what he's getting at. Either, either your network really, really sucks because the penetration testers are so lame they can you know, maybe you know, own it, or the, the penetration tester just couldn't get to what is obviously there, right? He's using the wrong penetration testers. So um, this is actually an ongoing thing for me. About once a week, I get a call from my mother because of this error message. I've actually taken to, rather than fixing my mom's machine, once the malware gets bad enough, simply replacing it. I, I, I am not joking here when I say I will have hour-long conversations about how confusing her computer is and why it's awful and it, it needs to be replaced. Um, Recently, I actually came to her house, and she uh, had come to the conclusion that the computer threw less error messages when she had it on one side of the room than the other. 
And, and for that reason, she's, she's actually moved her desk over to the other side of her office. Now, I, you know, well, what can we draw here? Well, we can draw that it, it's not just the, the big companies that really don't understand not just security messaging, but computer messaging in general, and are just confused and baffled by it. So then they'll try anything to fix it, whether it really has a, um, an effect or not. And generally, any kind of anecdotal uh, uh, observed improvement is seen as the big fix, and that's all you need. And, and I think we as, a, as an industry need to be a lot better about our messaging too. We, we need to help people understand what works, help people understand what doesn't, and help them through the situation as friends in sort of a hugging, loving manner, rather than, than this cold, calculating error that we have here. But the thing is, I mean, we really want to help, right? I mean, at the end of the day, if you, if you were to sit down, one of these conferences, you sit down Black Hat, um, go over to DEF CON, you have some beers with a pen tester, you have some beers with somebody that's doing security consulting, there's a reason that they're frustrated, right? There's a reason we're all kind of pissed off about it. And the reason is we, we really want to fix it. It might be a little sociopathic how we do it, right? But at the same time, we really do want to fix this problem. Um, we, uh, we have this, we have this thing where we, we, we basically, it's kind of a strange thing. If we can't, if we can't get the acceptance of the company that we're working with, then we start proving how cool we are, right? And we, uh, we start this kind of thing. But, uh, but at the same time, my favorite, by the way, is every time stack buffer overflows, an angel gets its wings. I know you're not supposed to read your slides, but I can't, I can't help but say that. But the, uh, but the idea is that, that basically we really, really want to help out. Um, even the, even the toughest of us, right? Even the toughest guy goes out and does the zero days. At the same time that we're, we're discovering this stuff, we're kind of laughing about how screwed up the world is, right? We're kind of laughing about how messed up some of these systems are where we keep all the cardholder data. <coughs> so at, at the same time, we're kind of getting into a loop, right? If you come to these, these presentations, you come to these conferences a lot, um, it's kind of turning into a, a prevention prevention talk. Uh, you get a lot of this, this stuff where you're, you're basically talking about what you're supposed to be doing to prevent it. And, and, and after a while, I think what we're running into is these big companies are saying, yeah, yeah, whatever, right? They say the security guy in the organization is always getting, you know, teed off about stuff that's going on. And they say, yeah, 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 make that guy happy, make that guy go away. It's because we're stuck in this kind of prevention mentality, right? Um, so the thing is, they just don't listen to us, right? And even if they did listen to us, here's the other problem. We don't always agree on everything. If you're to say antivirus and you walk up to a sampling of 10 people at the conference, you know, it might be half, might be 60, 40, whatever, you're going to say it's not worth it versus it's worth it. Some people say it's close your machine down. Some people say that, yes, it's absolutely necessary. It's part of an, uh, security guidelines. IDS, IPS, are those really helpful? Depends on how you implement. Depends, 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 right? However, you know, how many asterisks you want to put after it. Um, NAC VLP, this kind of stuff, network access control, data loss prevention, this stuff, um, you'll get responses to say, well, is that even real? Oh, that's just a buzzword. I don't know what that is, right? I, I, DLP, is that, is that really a product? It, so there have been now articles written about that. It really depends on, your, on, on who you ask. But, you know, the thing is, even if we did agree on this stuff, right? Um, we're at the point where we're telling people to brush your teeth and don't eat cheeseburgers, okay? So just, just to kind of put this in perspective, we're all getting kind of teed off at these conferences about, about how nobody listens to us, but how many of people in the room know how many calories from fat they've had today, right? There's some conference somewhere where these guys are talking about how much you're supposed to eat and how, what, what kind of foods you're supposed to eat and things like that. Um, the same thing is how many people brought a toothbrush? How many people have up-to-date maintenance schedules on their, on their automobiles? You know, it's the same kind of thing. We don't want to get to this point where we're just harping on this stuff and, and constantly telling people what they should do, and at the same time, it's, it's, it's just kind of uh, turning into white noise, right? So I had this idea that somewhere, in like almost parallel universe, right? even right now, they're, they're talking about us at another conference. So actually, I looked that up. And it turns out that that's exactly right. Um, just a month ago, there was a National Fire Prevention Association conference, and this was in Mandalay Bay, so right down the street. And so this is kind of a, maybe a look into that parallel universe. I have the feeling that this is a real slide. I can't say that for sure, but this is what I think might be going on over there, right? So 
You get the picture, right? It's all about changing your smoke detector batteries. How many times have they told us that? How